to inaction. Until then, everybody wanted action on stage. But he showed us the power of inaction, the power of silence, what he called the pauses, P-A-U-S-E-S, pauses, and also uh, the, the theme of waiting. Even after many years, waiting for Godot is still a talking point, and it remains perhaps at, as the most popular play of the 20th century. In fact, it has attained a kind of an iconic sta status, and the name Godot itself has become a metaphor for many things. The word, or rather the name, <laughs> Godot has entered into the vocabulary, and it is often used in different contexts. And uh, see the two pictures. Um, when we think about the beginning of Waiting for Godot, the scene is set in a bare country road with a small mount and also a tree. And uh, if I am right, when the second act begins, you can see a few leaves. I think two leaves or rather four leaves on the tree, which shows the passage of time. And uh, when the curtain rises, the audience can see uh, two elderly trans. One is uh, Vladimir and the other one is Estragon. And soon we come to know that they are waiting. They are waiting for their appointment with a man called Godo. Maybe an unidentified personality and who never comes. And the bare setting is characteristic of modern drama and also in fact the 20th century itself samuel beckett was associated with the pessimistic philosophy of uh, uh, maybe it came as an after effect of the second world war and he was also influenced by the existentialist concept of salt and also albert Camus, and of course the literature of the absurd and for the students of literature, I wish uh, they should know how this play began. Uh, it had a bare kind of a background, and then appears the two characters. And why is Waiting for Godot still relevant? That is my argument. Of course, it's a landmark in modern drama, no doubt about that. But more than that, the play's, the play's significance and achievement were attributed to the universal themes. People who watched and, and who read the play could easily identify with its context, with its content. And they felt that the play focused on a human condition in general, a constant and unfulfilled waiting between cradle and grave cradle and grave in the sense birth and death when we read through the poem of william wordsworth intimations of immortality you can you could feel the same theme it's a struggle between birth and death and of course the play has uh, got certain social and political context and another important aspect is uh, Yes, the depiction of human condition. And another important aspect of the play is the utilization of space. The play Waiting for Godot lacks detailed settings because one can argue that Beckett's aim was not at presenting an individualized personal background, but a general scenario that could be placed anywhere and affect anyone. So, it was more, more of a general kind of presentation, a kind of an archetypal space, an archetypal space that can stand in for everywhere or any time. And Beckett followed a minimalist pattern. And through this, he highlighted the futile nature of human existence. And that was his concern. But of course, you can see a few references to the Eiffel Tower and also the River Rhone, the river which flows through uh, France and Switzerland. 
So that is an indication that uh, the play has been set in France. But maybe this happened because of because the play was originally written in French. But still, he did not specify the place and time. So it is still significant because of the universality. People could easily identify with the content, the depiction of human condition, and how Beckett has utilized space. And these are the major characters of the play. The play has four major characters, and also a boy who appears at, at the end of both the acts. And the, the little boy carries a message from uh, maybe Godo. And other than the little boy, we have four major characters. Um, the two tramps who wait for Godo are Vladimir and Estagan. On the right side of his screen, uh, you can see Vladimir and Estagan. And uh, later they are joined by a couple, a bossy, a man with a bossy attitude, that is Pozo, and his slave named Lucky. And just have a look at the names of these characters. We can easily say that it is transnational, a trans transnational identity for these character names. Uh, Estagan sounds French, and the Vladimir is obviously Russian. And the Pozo's name sounds like an Italian clown. And uh, Lucky's name is like the name of a household pet. Usually we give names like tiger for our pet dogs. And Lucky's name is also like that, given to your uh, favorite, uh, what do you call it, pet. And uh, critics also say that Lucky is an English name, a British name. And in terms of their language, the way they communicate, communicated, uh, the two trams speak English with an Irish rhythm, with an Irish cadence. So it is clear that the characters are from uh, different parts of Europe, a plurality of uh, sourcing that encourages the notion that the stage here is in every place. And that is very important for us. The stage is in every place. And the characters as every man or every man, we can call it like that. So from four different parts of the world, uh, Russia and uh, the other one from uh, France, then uh, Italian, Pozo, and maybe uh, English, Lucky. So transnational identity of the characters. And uh, what about Godo and the present scenario? And I believe that every literary piece is a cultural document. And no cultural document emerges from a vacuum. Nor can it signify and survive in an abstract and timeless space. If waiting for Godot still holds a relevance or meaning, it is not because it speaks directly to a historical human condition, but because of its ability to come alive in various contexts and historical moments. Every time I have used the word kaleidoscope, it comes alive in different contexts and the different moments. And the play is a kaleidoscope, though it was created for a specific context. It has transcended all kinds of boundaries. And when we analyze the various productions of Godot over the years, this fact is evident. The production of Godot has set in the background of the apartheid in South Africa, the war-torn Sarajevo, and the flood-afflicted New Orleans. You can see the photographs. And the first one, the 1957 production of Godo, directed by Herbert Blow at the San Quentin prison, was done on 19th November. That was a landmark. I will uh, talk about the story later. And uh, uh, yes, in fact, Martin Eslin writes in the famous text, The Theatre of the Absurd, he writes, a group of worried actors were preparing to face the audience. I want all of you to imagine that situation. It's inside a prison, and when the actors saw the prisoners, they were quite worried. A group of worried actors were preparing to face 
is the audience. No play had been performed there since 1913. Now it is 1957. Just imagine 44 years. 44 years later, the play had been chosen largely because no woman appeared in it. And it was Samuel Beckett's waiting for Gautam. The curtain parted. I'm quoting from Martin Eslin. Okay. The curtain parted. The play began. The prisoners made one error. One mistake they made. They listened and looked two minutes too long and stayed left at the end. Just imagine the situation. The prisoners were so much enticed with the theme of the play. Right? Because the concept of waiting can easily be understood by the prisoners. And one person said that Godo is society. Another one said he is the outside. And there was a teacher at the prison. He said they know what is meant by waiting. And they knew if Gaudo finally came, he would only be a disappointment. And in fact, the paper, a newspaper quotation is also there. We are still waiting for Gaudo and shall continue to wait. And this was the response of the prisoners. And the second photograph that you see on your screen is from uh, the 1980 production by Donald Huwat, the Cape Town production during the time of apartheid in South Africa. See how the scenario changes. See how the context changes. And uh, then we have uh, Ilan Ronan in 1984, the Haifa production in Palestine, where the character spoke in Arabic. Once again, another different context, different cultural context, and the language is also different. Then we have uh, Susan Sendag in 1993, the Sarajevo production during the Bosnian War. It comes alive in uh, various newspaper reports. Even today, Waiting for Godo comes alive through various newspaper reports, especially uh, during the COVID-19 time. And I was uh, really amused reading an article, uh, the arrival of vaccine, uh, waiting for the arrival of vaccine, it was like waiting for Godo. So such similarities are still, we can see such similarities even today uh, regarding waiting for Godo. In cartoons, satirical sketches, and also even a skit, from the Sesame Street entitled Waiting for Elmo. And uh, that Waiting for Elmo, that particular uh, skit says that it's a modern masterpiece, a place so modern and so brilliant, it makes absolutely no sense to anybody. And that was the humor they used. And uh, in Malayalam, the play was translated as Godoe Kata. Godoe Kata uh, by Kadamanita Ramakrishnan. And many films too have been created from this play. And the latest being the film. Yeah, this, this film was released in 2001. And I believe that this is a perfect recreation of Waiting for Godot. And the latest one was uh, released in 2020, titled as The Big Hit. Uh, it was screened this year's IFFI at Goa. And uh, one, se one second, please. Sorry, I had to connect the charger. Sorry. And the film, a uh, big hit. And the film portrays the efforts of an actor named Etienne. You can see this man here, the bald headed Etienne. And he was, he's basically an actor. And he comes to a prison to conduct a theater workshop. And the, these are prisoners. And the prisoners are true hooligans. And they don't bother listening to the trainer. Gradually, 
he understands the psychology of the prisoners and decides to stage a production of Waiting for Guru. Just imagine the same story of the San Quentin uh, prison way back in 1957, but with a difference. And what happened? It was a totally new experience for these prisoners, being able to recognize themselves in the characters and their circumstances. Automatically, the prisoners rise to the occasion and the production becomes a grand success. And they are invited to different venues and they perform the play in different venues. And finally, they are invited to perform at the much celebrated Audion Theatre in Paris, one of the uh, six national theatres of France. It's a privilege to perform at that particular theatre. But what happened just before the curtain arises, the prisoners, they did not wait for the show. They fleed from the place, leaving Etienne alone to address the audience. Since he did not have another choice, he narrates his experiences with the prisoners, a kind of a one man show before the audience. And the audience listening to the monologue of Etienne are moved to tears. The, the significance of the story, how he transformed the prisoners. And uh, moreover, the story is inspired by true events which happened in Sweden in 1985. And when Swedish actor Jan Johnson staged a public performance of Waiting for Godot with a group of inmates from a high security prison in the historic Gothenburg City Theater. And later, when Samuel Beckett understood uh, this particular thing, yeah, this is the picture, Jan Johnson with Samuel Beckett. This is the original person. And do you know what Samuel Beckett said? He said, that is the best thing that happened to this play since I wrote it. That is the best thing that happened to this play since I wrote it. That was Beckett's reaction. because. The prisoners understood the value. And finally, coming to the last part of my uh, lecture, reading, waiting for Godot during the times of pandemic. So when I read waiting for Godot again during the pandemic, I found plenty of reasons to create a parallel with the current scenario. Every day we experience a bizarre state of affairs studied with lockdowns and restrictions, isolation and helplessness, loss and longing. I know that we have learned to live with it. There is no other way. But the grief, the fatigue are beginning to take shape in an unfathomed way. And I believe that the play can be considered as a parable, parable about Thesis, waiting, and isolation. Uh, Vivian Mercier once said that waiting for Godot is a play in which nothing happens twice. Nothing, nothing happens twice. We see no story and no message in it, but it depicts a situation which is generally applicable to every human being. And I feel that waiting for Godot is a sort of a skeleton key, a skeleton key opening into various contexts and situations, connecting the world and addressing the people from dissimilar cultural, social and political situations. As I told earlier, I found the play once again achieving a new life during this time of the pandemic. The play that moves from nothing to be done to the last dialogue of the play. Yes, let's go. After which they do not move, does not progress at all. Just think for the last one and a half years, the human life is also stuck in such a way. It started with nothing to be done. And soon people wanted 
to do things, but everything moved at a snail's pace. As in waiting for Godot, I feel that we are back in the Kenoma, a kind of a sensible emptiness. We still wait endlessly to get out of this grandering. The social gatherings have ended, at least for the time being. The journeys have stopped and we are forced to confine into ourselves. We wear a mask when we get out of our homes and we expect some kind of a miracle or a medicine to cause a permanent end to this. But what is that ultimate thing? We are not sure. In fact, waiting for Godo, the first question that the spectators often ask is who or what is Godo? And that is still a puzzle. Perhaps he represents God from the name God Godo. Maybe a master? The boy who appears at the end of both the acts. Each act claims that Godo has a long white beard, like some uh, pictorial representations of God in the West. Maybe uh, like a child's image of God, that he keeps sheep and goats. Godo keeps uh, sheep and goats. And when someone asks Samuel Beckett, who is Godo? He replied, if I knew, I would have said so in the play. After all, Godo gives Estragon and Vladimir a sense of direction and purpose in their lives, which is something similar to the religious beliefs. Here one can interpret Godo as an allegory of a post theistic existence. Also, the philosophical and psychological as well as theological dimensions to Godot's, Godot's known arrival. Coming to the final part, the question is, how did we survive during the pandemic? I believe that we restored a kind of a fellow feeling and kindness during this time. We tried to return to nature and also tried to stay pleasant with our family. And the play is notable for three features. Then we read it parallelly with the situation. One is that there is a fellow feeling and kindness between Estragon and Vladimir. They support each other. At one moment when Estragon uh, experiences nightmares, it is Vladimir who consoles him. And he even sings a song uh, to uh, Vladimir, I mean, to Estragon. And the second is that the play is extremely funny. And you can call it as a true Beckettian comedy, which is dark, quite daring, and also intelligent and disturbing. It is rooted in tragedy, but presented in a different way. Do we live? In a very troublesome time, we try to generate humor. We try to generate happiness to forget all these struggles. The third feature is, of course, the craft of the play, which still provides a motivation for many actors, many creators. Just have a look at the films released on the OTT platforms. It is the order of the day. The, the films getting released on various OTT platforms. And we are seeing a kind of a content revolution in films and also in other forms, art forms. The story, the characters are confined to a room or a small space, which reflects the mindscape of the people. We have already seen many films where the characters get trapped due to the unexpected lockdown. How the youngsters long to get back to their parents and homes. Such themes are common these days. And such films also unleashed the grandeur of nature before the audience. And reminded of the Malayalam films like Kala, the Tovino Thomas Tava Kala, then the Biju Menon film, Ar Kariyam. And the wonderful film, Cinema Bundy, 
it's a beautiful film something you can equate it with the great cinema paradise and at the same time it also showed the tension of confined spaces films like love wolf even uh, evil such films i'm talking only about the malayalam films then the two characters yes i was talking about the counter revolution and the two characters vladimir and estergan come on the stage and uh, try to spend time in useless activities they talk but it has no meaning at all even sometimes they try to abuse each other so that they can pass time their purpose is to wait for someone named gautho and during that wait they can do nothing vladimir and estergan sing they dance they talk about the boots the hats they philosophize they meet two other people pozo and lucky they contemplate suicide and once again they will do the same the next day when i see many activities around us these days i am remi i'm reminded of the same context i agree that during lockdown we witnessed many talents cropping up through social media and other platforms but it has also created a sense of nothingness on one hand we feel amazed at the talents and on the other seeing the performance of others i'm reminded of a quote in godo we are all born mad some remain so we are all born mad but some remain so and next point is i wish to make is that waiting for godo is the name of a situation the play provides a motivation to us how to get through life just look at the two characters vladimir and estergan they know that the life is full of pains miseries and sufferings they have no other option to to spend their lives except to talk and even to abuse at one another at one point they even to even try to commit suicide i told you about that but fails and they just continue their struggle but i believe that the last 15 months have taught us a lot the all conquering man was forced to live inside a room even nature returned to its normal see with man not intruding into their areas see the new word anthropos a period of unusually reduced human activity human mobility a considerable global showing of modern human uh, slowing of modern uh, human activities notably travel this brought back the animals to their habitat we realized that remaining busy in life can give nothing but how long will it last is another question and uh, usually uh, it, the play is regarded as a pessimistic it, it has got a pessimistic tone but in one sense the play is optimistic according to anas hemingway once hemingway has said every day is a new day that means every day comes with a new hope and estergan and vladimir are doing the same they are waiting hoping to meet godo who can change their lives similarly many of us are waiting for good days to return maybe for a result maybe for a job maybe to settle down to travel to fulfill our dreams i think you have heard a parable a kind of a anecdote what makes a prisoner alive in a prison the prisoner stays alive in a prison because he has a dream of getting freedom one day so that that he can have a free life so whether godo comes or not is not important because even at the end of the play the audience know that vladimir and estergan will return tomorrow again to wait for godo like these characters we have no choice but to wait and vladimir and estergan they remind us repeatedly that we are powerless 
to guide our life. We are frozen in place. It's unreal, but real, absurd, but actual. We don't know how long we have to wait. We don't know how, uh, when exactly what we are, what we are waiting for. We aren't sure what the end will look like when it comes. But we are confident. We will know when the waiting is over. At least we'll know that when the waiting is over. And uh, I'll just take five more minutes to wind up my uh, session. And I would like to mention about uh, the characters of Pozo and Lucky. And Pozo behaves like a master. I told that at the beginning. And Lucky is quite slavish. The tug of war between the powerful and the powerless still continue. Even today it is there. It's a fight for existence. Pozo in the first act is presented as a powerful character who is very much conscious of the time. I think Pozo is the only character who is attached to the physical time. I hope you remember uh, Pozo glances at his watch once in a while. But even his character changes in the second act. Pozo turns blind with his authority diminished and he gropes in darkness with Lucky. And his farewell speech reminds us of uh, Macbeth, which is about time and the brevity of life. This is the statement made by the farewell, a statement made by Pozo. The same day, the same second, they give, they give birth aside the grave. The light gleams an instant. Then it's night once more. I remember Shakespeare who wrote in Macbeth, life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that starts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Even the speech made by Lucky it is quite unconnected, but still it is significant in the context of the play. He tries to make a statement about man and God, but fails miserably. But he emphasizes that God couldn't save him and others. And Vladimir and Estegan remind us repeatedly that we are powerless to guide our fate. We are also frozen in place and time. I think during the lockdown days, we experienced the freezing of time. And Estagan wonders, this is a statement taken from the play. What is this particular day? Is it Saturday? Is it not rather Sunday or Monday or Friday? Soon they see the, the twilight and the day coming to a close. We also watched the days fading into the night. Many people lost their jobs. Many struggled and still are struggling to make the ends meet. And at one point, the second says, defeatedly, I can't go on like this. To which Vladimir responds, that is what you think. The banality of life is evident in these lines. It was tough for those people who spend their days in quarantine. And though, of course, they had a phone in their hands, they had television to watch, they had food to eat, but still it was tough without communicating in real with their near and dear. In Godo, to make the time pass, Vladimir and Estagan, they start a pointless game of changing the hats the bowler hats, they begin to change the hats. Later, they repeat the dialogues, abuse one another, etc. And remember, in the same way, the people discovered new ways to make time pass. Many puzzles, questions, challenges, etc. appeared on the social media handles. I think we all have participated in such games in WhatsApp, Twitter, and so on. And we created new ways to interact with others. 
the meetings, the class, the classes have become online. The words like Zoom and Google Meet, they have started to enter into our life. This is a famous cartoon, waiting for Godo, uh, trying to join the Zoom meeting, right? And nothing happens, nobody comes, nobody goes. Shall we go? Yes, let's go. They do not leave the meeting. And at times, we wait for the participants to join, and we wait for the participants to leave. And, uh, and the, the, even the, the concept of social distancing has become the order of the day. It may sound a bit funny, but in waiting for Godo, every time when Vladimir and Vestagan tries to embrace, they cannot because of the smell of the garlic, of course, and uh, they recoil. When Pooh and Lucky enters, they also keep a distance with the aid of a rope a kind of a physical distancing. But in the second act, when they fall before the trance, they come and help them to get up and Vladimir says, I believe this is the most significant line, the sensible dialogue in the play. Without thinking of anything, humanity, human beings have come to save the fellow beings. Let us not waste our time in idle discourse. Let us do something while we have the chance. It is not every day that we are needed. And see the next line, to all mankind, they were addressed, those cries for help still ringing in our ears. And I'm absolutely in love with the last part. But at this place, at this moment of time, all mankind is us whether we like it or not, let us make the most of it before it is too late. And uh, maybe such a wonderful philosophy and apt for the time. People all over the world have endured various kinds of waiting, waiting for the hospital beds, waiting for the oxygen supplies, Maybe for the borders to reopen, the opportunity to see their near and dear, the loved ones. Maybe waiting to listen daily to the number of deaths reported. TPR, the test positivity rate, the number of patients every day, about the arrival of the vaccine and so on. I know all these are personal narratives, but it is also a global shared experience. Maybe after a few years when someone asks, do you remember the pre-pandemic times? I believe the answer will be the statement given by Vladimir. A million years ago, a million years ago, nothing will be the same anymore, Estagan exclaims. Nothing happens, nobody comes, nobody goes. It is awful. And uh, so with this, I'm Concluding my presentation, my attempt was to open up the text waiting for Godot in the wake of a new context. I believe that waiting for Godot is for all times, a true timeless classic, which has documented the struggles of human beings on this planet. As Beckett says, the only sin is the sin of being born. You are on earth. There is no cure for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful lecture, sir. Uh, we we never be surprised uh, for you. Uh, always promise to deliver the best. Uh, thank you so much for this lecture, for drawing parallels uh, between uh, the timeless play and our times. Uh, I, I, I do believe that after listening to your lecture, uh, everybody will start thinking that absurd literature is not so absurd after all. Uh, thank you to everyone who has gathered here for this wonderful lecture. Our, uh, 
uh, google attendance log says it 106 people attended the lecture in total uh, thank you thank you for each and everyone who has attended the lecture uh, it is the time for questions uh, doubts or any discussion uh, so if and we have uh, got one question in the chat box can i read it out sir uh, sure uh, so the question is from Vimal John. Thank you for the lecture. Can you talk about some cultural materialist readings of the play? Are there interpretations that are more political in a material sense that in a philosophical sense than in a philosophical sense? Exactly. There are... about... Yeah, 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 please. And he has added one more thing. I just finished with that. And and talking about prisons in Malayalam cinema, we have also have we also have Mamuti's Munnaripa which is about a prisoner who loves his freedom and is terrified of true freedom. And that yes. is uh, the comment by uh, Mr. Vimal John. Yeah, totally agree to that point. But my focus was, uh, I, I, my intention was to open up the text in this current scenario. And that is why I did not go to the details of other things. But of course, uh, it, it is, uh, I use the word kaleidoscope. You can interpret in any number of ways. And uh, why did I pick all those films? Because uh, those films were released on OTT platforms and also uh, that was deliberately done in the in the wake of this particular pandemic. So a kind of a confinement is evident in all such films. And just try to pick a few examples, maybe to give an idea about uh, such themes, which is quite common during the time of pandemic yeah. uh, are there any uh, uh, sir this is not a question my name is Vijay Kiriya it's a very wonderful lecture I was uh, quite uh, enamored by the lucidity and the enunciation of yours very wonderful throughout the session just that to comment on uh, something that made me remind suddenly because the name of mamuti was mentioned uh, this is way out of uh, way out of the place but something that made me remind of another movie where the, there is a chorus are who is never appears but is constantly mentioned throughout the uh, movie and mamuti always references to it just I just <laughs> came to my mind. I just want that to that too it. as a savior, as a godlike yes. character, right? A master, master, it's a master. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's it's nothing related to this, but still life. Yeah, thank That's you. That's an sir. interesting thing. Thank you, and thank you for all the wonderful messages. Thank you, sir. Uh, are there any more questions, doubts, discussions, opinions? Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I am Sharad Chandran from Trivandrum. Uh, let me express my appreciation for your extremely interesting and wonderful lecture. Uh, in these pandemic times, you have uh, drawn a number of parallels that really uh, brings its uh, brings the relevance of the play that is uh, most enjoyable. And uh, it was a novel perspective of a well-known play. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. No words to express my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, are there any more opinions or questions or doubts? If not, can we conclude the lecture, sir? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much uh, uh, for this wonderful lecture, sir. And also uh, our heartfelt gratitude. Our, our words could barely suffice. Uh, what our heart tells uh, now. Uh, 
thank you so much for this lecture we are receiving messages again and again in our personal numbers and our groups uh, about the wonderful lecture delivered today uh, uh, so this is the 13th lecture uh, of our series uh, next next I mean, just to add updates on the next lectures in the coming weeks uh, so uh, the the in, i will just uh, point out the speakers uh, to follow uh, dr gururaj trinivasa murthy uh, national award winner for translation will be speaking this month m mugundan the celebrated writer uh, dr anil kumar registrar kerala university mangla balachandra uh, the famous harikatha artist dr nisha venugopal uh, professor uh, in department of english uh, sri shankaracharya university of sanskrit dr p n suresh former kalamandalam vice chancellor and the current registrar of nss uh, uh, this is a short list of speakers who will be speaking in smriti uh, interdisciplinary international webinar series um, uh, you know in this month so thank you so much for this wonderful participation we expect you uh, in the next lectures to uh, thank you so much rendit sir thank you so much uh, Uh, listeners who have gathered here today with us thank sparing you, you, one Anandu. very important hour of their lives thank yeah, you so much thank you all so much. see you again thank you